Okay, now that I've got some lunch in me, it's time for a video. I'm glad you asked. Spam and cheese sandwich. Yeah. Toast a slice of Spam in a frying pan, melt some cheese on it, then put the whole thing between two lightly toasted slices of wheat bread. It's good eating. And don't let anybody tell you different. A new segment. Cooking with Tom. Greetings one and all, and welcome back to Tom Tip Free. Yes, I am back from my break. Hopefully uh, you didn't even notice that I took a break. That was kind of the objective of doing that bargain bag video last weekend. Uh, it was it was one that requires very little brain power, and that was the kind of video I needed to do if I was going to do one last weekend. Yes, as I mentioned before, I took like a almost a two-week break from anything that required a lot of... Uh, thought and a lot of planning and as far as my YouTube videos yeah I had been trying to get uh, these two album review videos this one and another one that I'll be filming that's coming up probably within a week uh, for the last month I wanted to get these to you but I could not focus my thoughts enough to uh, to write out notes for the reviews but I got my mojo back this past weekend uh, my creative content uh, juices started flowing again so a day and a half uh, this weekend of listening and concentrating on writing out notes and here I am back with you and yes as I mentioned here we have another now and then video uh, for those of you who might be newcomers now and then is the segment in which I review an artist's most recent album as well as one from their back catalog the subject of today's now and then is American blues man Keb Mo and for now we'll be talking about his brand new album Oklahoma now full disclosure right off the bat here I am not a huge fan of the blues, uh, for two basic reasons. First of all, as I've probably mentioned before, uh, I like my music more upbeat. Uh, you know, I, I have to be in a really particular mood to listen to emotionally weighty music or, you know, stuff that's kind of depressing sounding. So yeah, I usually, you know, 90% of the time I look to music to cheer me up. And of course, you know, blues by its very nature doesn't do that, uh, for the most part anyway. And also another reason I have never cared for the blues, and this is an argument more toward traditional blues, not contemporary blues, is the lyrics can be quite repetitive, as you've probably noticed. You know, the old uh, Robert Johnson stuff and that kind of thing. You know, you, you get the same lyric like three times and then the fourth lyric. And so, you know, lyrics, I will admit lyrics are not the first thing that I pay attention to when I listen to new music, but with blues especially, there's not a whole lot going on with the music, not that it's not good. It's just, you know, the lyrics are kind of in the forefront. And so I search for something more lyrically when I get uh, songs that are where the music is more subdued. So that's the thing I'm trying to say here. Uh, now I have over the years gotten to like some blues, uh, most notably B.B. King, because my sister was a huge fan of B.B. King, uh, and several of his albums were in my sister's collection, so I've kind of developed an affinity for him over the years, the last few years, and so I've actually bought a few more of his albums. Uh, by the way, if you've never listened to B.B. King, I mean, if you like good guitar work, look no further than B.B. King. He is a wicked, or was, God rest his soul, wicked on the guitar and fan, uh, just absolute master. He's up there with Clapton and Santana and the greatest guitarists of all time. But uh, anyway, as uh, you might guess from what I was just talking about a minute ago, I tend to have gotten, you know, as, as far into blues as I've gotten, I tend to be more fond of the contemporary blues artists who tend to blend blues in with other genres. They just pull in stuff from other genre, genres like R&B and soul, and in some cases rock and pop, uh, such as Robert Cray, for instance, and he was actually another artist that uh, my sister had a few C of his CDs in her collection, and I've picked up a few more since then. I've got, oh, six of his albums, I think, as well as, and we come around to today's subject, Keb Mo. Now, my only exposure to Keb Mo until now was Peace Back by Popular Demand. It was a 2004 covers album of uh, protest and peace and, you know, social consciousness songs such as Imagine by John Lennon, uh, What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding, which was made famous by Elvis Costello, uh, For What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield, and The Times They Are Changing by Bob Dylan. And I really liked it, uh, but of course I was fully aware of the fact that you know, a covers album is not the truest representation of what an artist sounds like. Uh, and despite that fact, when I first check out an artist that I'm not into yet, if they have a covers album, 
probably two-thirds of the time I'll check out that album first just because the songs are ones that I can identify with and so I can kind of get a springboard or launching point off of you know those songs as to whether or not I might like the artist. But anyway, yes, I like this album very much and had always wanted to check out his original material, but I'd never gotten around to it. Uh, fast forward to about a month ago, uh, I might not have ever picked up this uh, album, Oklahoma, if it hadn't been for a very close friend uh, that I've made over the past year. Uh, he was born and raised in Oklahoma, at least I think he was born there, he can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and whenever I hear a song that mentions Oklahoma or a locale therein in its lyrics, uh, and I let him know about it, he seems to be interested and, and uh, takes an interest. So in that respect, he s tends to have uh, some pride in his home state. And so obviously when I saw this album on the new releases list, uh, it caught my eye and made it stand out. And I decided I've been waiting for an excuse and a chance to delve into Kebmo more deeply. So I took this chance. Now, as the title of this album might kind of obliquely imply, uh, these songs do have a, a decent helping of country influences sprinkled throughout, uh, but they're not piled on to an off-putting degree. So those of you who might have an aversion to country music, don't let that scare you off with this album. Uh, but also, you know, as I mentioned before, he uh, also includes plenty of hints of other genres, like a little bits of R&B and soul in some songs, and hints of pop and rock in others. Uh, but, of course, underneath all that is a solid blues foundation, uh, because Kebmo, after all, is a blues artist, if only in for the purposes of locating him in the record store. I mean, really, he does kind of draw on so many other uh, genres of music, as I said. And another difference with Kebmo's brand of blues is that it's not overwhelmingly downbeat or depressing. Uh, there's a fair bit of uplift, of brightness, in not just in terms of the lyrics, but also in terms of the music. Uh, you know, the music seem, tends to have overall a bit of a brighter sonic palette. It's not really stark and dark and depressing, which is, in my opinion, a huge plus. Now, a great place to start talking about this album is with the title track. It's definitely a, an, an anthem of sorts, a kind of a celebratory anthem of the state of Oklahoma. And it's, in a way, I almost wouldn't be surprised to see it used in an ad campaign for the state's Bureau of Tourism. And, you know, also the lyrics. If the chorus doesn't get stuck in your head after you listen to this song, uh, I, I think you need to see a doctor, honestly. It's just such a catchy and really, really good song. And one of the album's centerpiece tracks is its first single called Put a Woman in Charge, and that features Roseanne Cash. And it's about just what the title says. I mean, hey, Personally speaking, I'm all in favor of seeing the fall of the patriarchy and, as the song says, putting a woman in charge. Uh, my only complaint about the song is that uh, the chorus consists of just the song title sung four times. So, you know, possibly could have been fleshed out there a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, the, the message of the song overall, I love it. That's one of my favorites on the album. Then we have a song called Don't Throw It Away, which is it's kind of a syncopated uh, Dixieland-style romp that advocates for recycling. Uh, the lyrics might be slightly cheesy in that song, uh, just for the obviousness of its message more than any, any other reason. But in a way, in a strange way, they actually fit the kind of whimsical feel of the song in a way. Uh, even though the message itself is serious and timely and very worthy of attention right now. And also on the more lighthearted side of things, uh, and also kind of with a bit of a syncopated, uh, almost a train chugging sort of a rhythm, is a song called I Should've. And that's where uh, Kebmo complains about arguments he's had with his wife and wonders if he might have been better off with one of his previous girlfriends and she with her previous boyfriends. It's, I mean, you know, the subject matter of the song might be a little bit dubious, but it's offset by the humorous way that he tackles it. it it's really, it, it's a fun song. It's and That's one of those things about uh, country music and his brand of blues, at least some elements of those genres, is their sense of humor. And that comes forward in that song. Uh, but as far as for more serious stuff on the album, uh, there's a, a beautiful, gorgeous song called This Is My Home, and it's a beautiful ballad about finding a place to belong no matter where you come from, uh, whether it's, you know, what situation you come from or what country you come from. The message in that is very timely, again, like the, uh, like Don't Throw It Away. And then there's also the song, the opening track, I Remember You, which is, it's very good, it's, it's, kind of odd that he chose that song to open the album with because it's 
one of the overall with the album it's one of the less memorable songs it doesn't really have a whole lot to say but it's a very good song it, it probably sounds like a contradiction in terms it's a good song but it doesn't have much to say but listen to it and you'll probably understand uh, the other duet on this album is the closing track called beautiful music with uh, and it's sung with robbie brooksmore who i believe is kevmo's wife uh, the lyrics mention music so you know that always is going to score points with me and but it's also got he also does has gorgeous vocal harmonies with uh, his duet partner there that's just a great song and the only really true blues song on this album in my opinion anyway is cold outside and that's the next to last track on the album uh, and and that's great it's a fantastic song but that's the one thing to be aware of with this album is if you are looking for more straightaway blues you could be disappointed with this album but then again that's as i said that's that's kept most brand of blues is it's not so much straight ahead blues as it is blues with pulling in a bunch of other genres uh, to mix along with it so anyway as if you couldn't tell by everything i've said in this video up to now i absolutely love this album uh kebmo oklahoma it's fantastic i wouldn't be very very surprised if it did not end up in my top five for the year it is that good and it was so good in fact that it made me want to delve deeper into kebmo's work uh, case in point that was now and this is then just like you kebmo's third album from 1996. Now, if Peace Back by Popular Demand was my introduction to Kebmo and Oklahoma was kind of testing the waters of his original material, then this album was, you know, the proverbial third time is the charm. It clinched the deal for me. I'm all in. I've picked up uh, two or three more of his albums since listening to this one and Oklahoma. Haven't listened to all those yet, but uh, yes, uh, as I said, I'm all in. Uh, now, this album particularly represents what I find so appealing about Kebmo's work. Uh, his blend of other genres into his music, as I mentioned before, and also, uh, as I also mentioned before, he strives to include more upbeat uh, vibes in some of his songs. And perhaps, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if that might have been intentional on his part. Uh, perhaps he feels that people who aren't into blues, like me, uh, can be repelled by the genre if it's all about pain and heartache and misery and so if that was his uh, objective uh, then mission accomplished Keb. Uh now as for this the albums uh, the songs on this album uh, there's one really really good song more than one way home is uh, that's track three it was the first song that really grabbed my ear with its its great slide guitar hook i mean it's just fantastic and it's got a beautiful 70s soul drenched sound that's uh, about how home means something different to everyone it's just it's just a, a great song it's, it's one of my favorite kevmo songs even though i haven't listened to a whole lot of them i grant you but it's just fantastic uh there's another song on here called you can love yourself uh it then that's an acoustic track and it's just keb and his guitar and it comes it comes from a bluesy place but he lightens it with some self-deprecating humor and uh, and the uh, message of the song is basically what the title says you can love yourself uh, one of the lyrics uh, for an example of the humor is my mother says she loves me but she could be jiving too so uh yeah just it's, it's just, just a great song what can i say uh, and then there's the uh, the title track just like you and that's one of the more interesting songs it's uh at least my impression of the lyrics my interpretation of the lyrics are it's about two friends who went their separate ways in their youth uh, had similar things happen to them, but came back together feeling differently about those experiences, taking something different away from their respective uh, experiences. And uh, that song actually uh, is notable for having Bonnie Raitt and Jackson Brown on guest vocals. So, uh, and, and yeah, that, that makes the song just that much more beautiful. It's a, just a great song. This is a great album, what can I say? And uh, one of the more downer songs, though, That's Not Love, which is actually the opening track, uh, but it is couched in a very pleasant pop R&B arrangement, and it's about having to face the signs and symptoms of an unfulfilling and possibly emotionally abusive relationship. So yeah, that song's got a good message. It's more on the serious side, but it's, you know, so as I said, it's great. Now, there are more songs of a more straightaway blues feel on this album than there are on Oklahoma but uh, they are more lyrically interesting than the more traditional blues which is where i have a problem with that genre as i mentioned before contemporary blues you know scores points with me for being much more lyr lyrically interesting uh, now one of the songs of that vein is perpetual blues machine uh, whose title might make it sound like a self-parody but 
It's about a woman who makes her man feel so miserable that he thinks of her as a machine that perpetually gives him the blues, hence the title. So that's a good one. And uh, Standing at the Station is one of my favorites among the more straightaway blues tracks. And that's about a man whose woman is leaving him and leaves him standing at the station, teardrops in his eyes, as the lyrics say. That's just, yeah. As far as the more, con the more traditional leaning blues goes, that's the kind of song I like. And then there's a song called Mama Where's My Daddy, which is undoubtedly the most depressing song on the album. So when you get to that track, have a, a box of tissues handy. Uh, it is, it's, its title basically says it all. It's about a little boy who's never seen his father and wants to know why. And it's just a very, very tender, very, very heart-tugging song. And then the closing track is just a totally beautiful, gorgeous little song. It's called Lullaby Baby Blues which uh, we, we assume uh, he wrote for his child, because I'm sure he has more, at least one child. Uh, and it's just him and his acoustic guitar, and it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous closing track. And it, he couldn't have closed the album better. Now, this album actually scored Keb Mo his first Grammy Award for Best Contemporary Blues Album. And it's an award that he's been nominated for five more times, uh, six if you count the album he did jointly with Taj Mahal, called Taj Mo. Good album, good title. I haven't listened to the album yet. Uh, and he has won the Best Contemporary Blues Album Grammy twice more since this album. And I can see why, honestly. Uh, I feel that he is a unique voice in blues, although I will admit, as I said before, my experience is limited. Uh, and if he was, as I also mentioned before, if he, if he was intending to lure in the blues naysayers like me with his approach of, you know, pulling in bits from other genres and also lightening the overall mood of his of his uh, material, then it worked. What can I say? I am still exploring his back catalog. I've picked up two or three more of his albums since listening to this one in Oklahoma, and I know I'm going to have a hell of a lot more fun uh, continuing to listen to his music. So, uh, fantastic artist, Kev Moe. Uh, don't pigeonhole him as contemporary blues. He's much more than that. Now, which of these two albums do I prefer? I have actually been deliberating that for quite a while. And honestly, it, it's, it's pretty much a draw in terms of material, but I'd say this one has to take the lead slightly because just because of my personal connection, as I mentioned, my good friend who is from Oklahoma. So this kind of has, in that way, it kind of has a personal connection to me. Um, I actually have not told him about this album until now. So he's the first, I assuming he's just finding out about this album because uh, I kind of wanted to surprise him that way. But anyway, whether you like the blues or even if you don't like the blues, uh, you got to do yourself a favor and check out Kev Moe's music. He is one to hear. He is fantastic. But uh, for now, that is my look at Kev Moe now and then. I hope you enjoyed it. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I appreciate the feedback. Whether about this video or anything on my channel, or about music in general, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers' channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.